Hi guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be asking you, what three games would you choose to show somebody who is completely new to the whole video game thing? So as you guys will know, I've been doing some co-op gameplays recently with my girlfriend Neve, and she's pretty new to video games. She has played some stuff in the past, a little bit of Wolfenstein when she was younger, and uh, various other little bits and bobs, but on the whole, she's never really played video games, doesn't really know about the big famous video game titles, and it's never really been a big part of her life. And so I'm kind of having a lot of fun introducing her to some of the games that I've really enjoyed in the past, games that I like playing now, games that I find fun or collectible, or ones that have had a pretty big impact on the gaming community as a whole. And it's really interesting to see her reactions to those games as we do co-op videos. So this kind of gave me the idea for a theoretical question to ask the YouTube community. What three video games would you choose to show somebody who had never really played games before in the past, who had no idea what the whole thing was about, who was completely alien to the concept, and who hadn't seen like you know the big titles that define genres and whatever else? I think it's an interesting question, and if you're only choosing three, it's very hard to get the balance right. Maybe you'd want to go for something that was really classic, you know, very, very retro, and kind of, yes, yeah, started things off, started a genre, or really inspired lots of games to come in the, in the future. Or maybe you'd choose something that was really at the higher end of the spectrum, to show off what we've achieved today, what modern gameplay graphics can be like, how far we've come. I don't know, I'll leave it completely in your hands. But um, I'm going to show you my three picks, so let's take a look. Okay, so the first game that I've picked here is Super Mario Land on the original Game Boy. And yeah, I felt like I had to go with a platform game for my, the first game that I would show to a non-gamer. Um, because platform games have been such a big part of my life growing up. And obviously which platform game to show is very hard to pick because it's such a big genre and there's so many massive amazing titles that I played growing up and still play to this day. Um, obviously the Sonic games are a really, really big part of this genre, um, but I decided to go with this game because um, out of all the Mario games, it's the one that I played the most, and the one that has the biggest nostalgia value for me. I played this game a ton when I was a kid growing up, and it's one of the first Mario games that I played so much that I actually managed to complete it. I think the difficulty and learning curve in this game are just about right. It's very easy to get into, but the difficulty really does ramp for the later levels, and it provides a great challenge. Plus, I think that the uh, original Game Boy is one of the best handheld devices out there. It was a massive part of my gaming experience uh, as I developed. And therefore, I think this would be a great game to show a non-gamer or, or a newcomer because of all the nostalgia value and because of the historical importance of the Game Boy. Playing this game today has brought back so much nostalgia, and it's really surprising how well the game holds up today. And I, think that, I think that's because of the really, really good, simple gameplay. It's a very addictive game. Acknowledging the limitations of the hardware, the game actually looks really, really good, and uh, you know they do very well to make the different levels um, fit in with the theme. Um, you know, you've got the underwater level, you've got the Egyptian level, which is fantastic, and um, it all just ties together really well. Um, the music in this game is really superb. Uh, the songs are instantly recognisable, and I can still remember all of the songs from each of the different worlds, even to this day. They're just so catchy and stick in the mind, and again, help to build that theme. I especially love the Egyptian-themed uh, songs. This game was pretty adventurous for its time, as it includes some kind of shmup or shooter elements. There's the underwater levels where you're flying around and are sub-shooting missiles at things. And there's also the really great plane level at the end, which is, I think is the last level, which is so much fun and actually really difficult. Um, I remember when I first beat that level, I was so happy with myself because it was a real challenge and just beating the last boss is a great feeling. But yeah, I think that's a pretty amazing thing for a Game Boy platformer in 1989 to have so much uh, innovation and to have shmup and side-scrolling shooter elements. That's just really, really cool. This is just a great iconic game that I would I think is a really good introduction to Mario and the Mario platforming genre. Of course, the franchise has moved on a lot and I know lots of people really love the NES and SNES games which weren't a big part of my life growing up, but I acknowledge they're fantastic games. And also, you know, the Wii, the 3D, fully 3D games on the Wii and the Nintendo 64 are really superb. But I think for me, this is where my obsession with Mario started and I think this would be a great game to show somebody new to the whole video gaming thing. 
Okay, next up I felt like I had to choose a first person shooter because FPSs occupy such a huge part of the video gaming market and they occupied a huge amount of my time and focus and energy when I was a kid. This genre of game has really inspired so many of us to get into video games and we still love playing them to this day. It's very, very difficult again to pick one that I would recommend to somebody first getting into the genre, but I've gone with Quake 2 and I could have chosen any of ID's iconic first person shooters. You know, the Doom series are really, really fantastic. The earlier and uh, Quake 3 are really, really good. Not so much Quake 4, actually. I couldn't really get into that. But I've gone for Quake 2 because this, this was the iconic one for me. This was the one where I spent most of my time playing. The first game was obviously very cool, very atmospheric, very gothic. And this one's kind of built on those ideas and, in my opinion, made them better. It's a really, really atmospheric shooter that did things that other games weren't doing at the time. I love being able to explode my enemies into giblets and seeing chunks flying off. And I just love the explosive energy of this game. There are so many great weapons you can use to blow people up with. There's really fantastic fully 3D environments to explore. Um, there's lots of content here. But the main thing for me when I was growing up about this game was the online multiplayer. This is one of the first online first person shooters that I ever played. And it got me addicted to that high octane deathmatch energy. You know, me and my friends would log on every weekend and we'd just spend hours blasting each other to smithereens. The game holds up really well to this day, and it has been ported to many different systems. Uh, I really enjoy the Nintendo 64 version of the game, which has a great four-player split-screen mode, but I've also spent a lot of time playing the PlayStation 1 uh, port, which is also really good, and again, uh, the system can handle four-player multiplayer, which is great. If you do spend several hours playing multiplayer, the slightly polygonal graphics can grind on the eyes a little bit. So obviously the PC version looks the best now, because you can kind of increase the graphics settings and get a better resolution. I mean, this game was the platform for Quake 3, which for me was where arena-based online gameplay really, really took hold. I mean, I had enjoyed a lot of deathmatches on Quake 2, but Quake 3 really expanded things much further and was a fantastic game in its own right. One that I spent hours and hours playing online multiplayer. And I know there were the whole Unreal guys that really liked that, but I think that Quake 2 was just the platform that exploded things into online gameplay, as far as I was concerned. And so this is a great introduction to the whole deathmatch killing each other type of experience that I think that new gamers would love. It's not a particularly difficult game either. Um, I think the last boss was pretty challenging, but mostly it's, it's pretty fun and pretty easy to pick up and play and get into and just destroy things with. So yeah, this is my second recommendation. Finally then, I had to pick a kart-based racing game, because these are much more easy for newcomers to pick up, rather than realistic and challenging games like Gran Turismo, which require quite a lot of skill, quite a lot of endurance. Kart-based games are full, colourful, cartoony, engaging, and not that hard to get into. Again, it's very difficult to pick just one, because it's such an expansive genre with so many fantastic games. Of course, the Mario Kart series would be the most iconic, but Sonic All-Stars Racing does come close sometimes. I've really been enjoying playing Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed recently, but that's a hard-as-nails game. I think that for me, Mario Kart 64 was where things really started to take off. I hadn't played the SNES one, this was the one that most people from my generation first started to get into. We loved getting together and playing this game in four-player split-screen. It's a really iconic and fantastic game, with all of your favourite Nintendo characters competing against each other. The levels were really, really interesting, and they had so many varied environments, different shortcuts to pick up, and just wonderful scenery to take in. Nowadays, I'll agree that the game does look pretty dated, but a lot of the N64 games haven't aged very well because of the kind of blocky and polygonal appearance of them. But I still think this is where I would start to show somebody, look, this is what kart-based racing games look like, and this is the historic one where things started to take off for me. You can see from my gameplay footage that I actually suck at this, I'm very out of practice. Because the feeling of the game has dated a little bit. I kept trying to drift around the corners like I was playing one of the later Mario Kart games, or indeed Sonic All-Stars Racing. Um, it didn't handle quite as nicely as those games, but that's probably just because I've got more used to the newer games in the, in the genre. However, I think this is still a good place to start for newcomers. It's fun, colourful, addictive, fast-paced, and it's really great unlocking the higher speeds and different race modes and new characters as well. And I think it really leads on nicely into the later games in the series, you know, with a double dash on the GameCube, the Wii one, and the Wii U game, which I really need to pick up because it looks really, really good. Still, I think this is the one that I would pick that stands the test of time and that stands out the most for me in terms of nostalgia value. And I think it triggered a lot of clones and different attempts to be like this series. I still think the Mario Kart series is probably the best, but as I said, I really am enjoying the Sonic games too. Anyway, yes, Mario Kart 64, what a game. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. 
Please do uh, like or comment if you want to, and let me know what your three choices would be, either in a comment or in a video response. It'd be great to hear from you guys soon. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.